Steam, the game marketplace that everyone uses. Oh sure, it has some competition. To be fair, a lot of it's thriving. But when somebody says, do you want to play some PC games with me? The response is, what's your Steam account? It's not hard to get a game onto Steam now either. And while it makes sense that if you sell a game on Steam, you make money out of Steam. Hi folks, it's Falcon. And today, GameRanks asks the question, how and why Steam makes so much money? Somebody could say, well, they're an online store and they take a cut. And that would be at least kind of accurate. But believe it or not, it's a little bit more complex than that. Oh yes. First off, to preface all of this information, Steam has sold an obscene amount of games. A report by Steam Spy indicates that in 2015, Valve generated around $3.5 billion in revenue. Now that's not profit, and that's not money that they keep, but that's a silly amount of money. To have made the vast majority of that money not selling a single physical product, to do the, all of that on entirely virtual goods, I mean, that's insane. And as it stands to reason, when you're bringing in that kind of money, it's not simple. I mean, it's not the same thing as Best Buy, although Best Buy, if you were to buy a game there, believe it or not, it's a lot more complex as well. Simply taking a cut, when you start to figure in negotiations, contracts, lawyers, and all that becomes a mess. There are certainly advantages to publishing a game on Steam. For one, there's a built-in content network. It's very easy to deliver a game on Steam because it's on Steam servers, and the users who buy it just download it. It's available at any time, and it's certainly better than a store, because if I'm wanting to game at around 3 a.m., but I don't want to play anything I got, I don't have to wait until 8 a.m. to go to the store and buy a game. All I have to do is get my happy ass on the Steam. Obviously, my happy ass is money is a good thing for a developer on account it costs money to do anything in this world. You can't do things without money. I don't know if you heard, but being everything costs money. Everything that you want to make will cost money to make. And if you want to be able to make more of it, you probably want to make some money off of it. Even if you're driven entirely by the want to create, by the want to indulge in artistic expression and creativity, somebody's got to pay for it. It takes time, it takes materials, it takes skills, it takes tools. These are all things that do not come for free. Time, whether yours or team members of yours, has to be paid for because it's spent away from doing things that they do like a normal person. Having families, having friends, going places that are neat. Time is money. The phrase comes from the fact that we should be compensated for our time. Materials can really vary from game to game, but if you do art in a certain way, there may be art materials that you need. You could also most certainly list equipment underneath this, and all of this stuff costs money. So even a developer that makes games without the slightest intent of profiting, if they want to continue to make games on some level, they're going to need some kind of compensation for it. Unless, of course, they already have a lot of money and then it doesn't really matter. But show me a rich indie game dev and I'll show you a way to try to say that I'm surprised. Maybe something clever. I can't promise anything because I, you can't really promise you're going to find me a rich indie game dev. I mean, they do exist, but are they common? Not really. Indie game devs are often more along the lines of the musicians or modern artists of the scene. They need to have some place to live, something to eat, and maybe something to wear. Although that's not necessarily that important, you could probably wear dirty clothes for a while if you wanted. And when all that work goes into a game and the game goes up on Steam, Steam takes a cut. And not everybody thinks it's entirely fair. An agent for an actor typically gets around 10% of what that actor makes. Now granted, it's a one-on-one -on -one situation, an actor is one person, an agent is one person. But they both make more money than they ever should, and there's no such thing as an actor that makes near what a AAA game makes. Over the course of a career, an actor, a AAA superstar actor, might make the kind of money most AAA games make in a weekend. Seriously, it's gotten to that point. And Steam takes 30% of it. That's a lot. If you make $100 million, Steam takes $30 million. And then if you count in taxes, it's probably another 10 to 20 million, and then you take away that 10 to 20 million because the company used some sort of loophole to avoid paying taxes. And still, $30 million out of $100 million is a lot of money. 
and a lot of games, triple A in scale, make that kind of money. And that's not after expenses, that's before expenses. The money I'm referring to is the gross revenue, which is essentially all the money that comes in. Valve takes that 30% cut, then gives it to the company, which then has to, you know, pay for the game that it spent a bunch of money on, and then whatever's left over is considered profit. Being this is how you release PC games, if you want a chance of anyone playing it, it's kind of a big deal. And on top of that, Steam doesn't just ask for a 30% cut of your game, they also give you various restrictions as to what you can and can't do. Now it's not necessarily censorship, because I know people love that word nowadays. The way Valve regulates Steam is by having everything function as a closed ecosystem. Kind of like how Apple does it, except for with a fair amount more freedom, to be completely honest, but still. The reason why Marcus Pearson, formerly of Minecraft fame, did not have Minecraft on Steam, and to this day it still is not on Steam because it's a Microsoft property and obviously they don't want to play that way. <coughs> Windows Store! <coughs> Xbox <coughs> Store! <coughs> Sorry, I, I, I had something in my throat there. If you've ever played Minecraft, you know that there's a lot of customization that people do on the client or the worlds themselves. In order to make it compatible with Steam's platform, all that would have to be regulated as products, whether they're free products or pay products, they would all have to be some form of downloadable content. They would have to go through Steam's approval processes, they would have to apply to a certain set of rules, things would have to be done, as I said, a certain way. Notch didn't want to do things that way. He didn't want to split the community in two for one because he did not want to make a situation where the outside Steam version of Minecraft had a completely different experience than the inside version of Minecraft and they would not be able to play together because it would require files that not everybody has and that just wasn't appealing to him. Now granted they made hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars a day and then Marcus Pearson sold it for 2.5 billion dollars so who can say he was wrong? He was probably right to retain creative control over that aspect of the game because it helped spread the game. It helped make the game popular. It helped sell the game. And they kept all the money. Now, am I saying that means Steam is bad? No. Steam is great. Steam has done so much for PC gaming that it's borderline stupid. Without Steam, we may not even be playing many games on the computer anymore, on account they lacked a distribution method that kept people's interest. The community features of Steam knock that out of the park. But still, 30%? It's steep. What's your favorite thing about Steam? What's your least favorite thing about Steam? Let's meet in the comments and talk about that. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. If you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every single day of the week. The best way to see them first is a subscription. Just saying. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I am Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconHero. And we will see you next time right here on Game Ranks.